If you like crunchy bacon, this will get it there for you. Perfect. And this, my friends, is how you have a steak salad on the road. Well, last week I showed you a video about my must-have kitchen essentials that I travel with most of the time. And I told you that I would tell you this week about a few other things that I bring along with me. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about this thing right there and this thing right there and some other things that I'm gonna show you how I cook on the road during my travel adventures. Airbnb. Let's take a little tour. As you can see, it has a kitchen here with a full-size refrigerator. It has a toaster oven and a microwave, a sink, but it doesn't have a cooktop. So I brought a few tools today that I'm going to share with you uh, that are part of my travel kitchen and do a little bit of cooking with you today. There are certain food items that I travel with and I put them in my checked luggage so that I have some things with me at my travel Airbnb or wherever I happen to be. And let me show you what they are. This little bag of dehydrated vegetables from my garden. They make great soups. I can reconstitute them in soups. I can reconstitute them and use them in omelets, all kinds of things. So this little pack comes with me. Organic powdered peanut butter because I can use it to make just peanut butter for dipping vegetables or put on crackers, even on the airplane. And also when I'm with my grandkids, it's a great thing to have if they need a little snack. I can always mix up some peanut butter. It's organic uh, powdered peanut butter. I can't find this everywhere, so I bring my own. Dry blueberries that I have grown on my blueberry bush in my yard, and I just go ahead and dry them and bring them. They're great to add to anything to just give it a little bit of sweetness or just eat on their own. Sun-dried tomatoes in a package because I don't want to buy a jar with oil and have to leave it or throw it out and these are good for a long time. So a package of sun-dried tomatoes. A friend from Singapore gave this to me and it's wonderful to add to my miso soups to give me a little bit of extra flavor and nutrition. It is some dried seaweed that's seasoned and it's so delicious you can even eat it on its own out of the pack. Sometimes all I want is a little bit of broth or to make some soup and these little packages are perfect for me to use on the go. If it's just me traveling, I only have like one cup of coffee a day, so I just use instant coffee. I'm actually trying this brand out today. I've never used it, so we'll see how it goes. This is called kuzu root, Japanese kuzu root, and it's used to make things like sauces and gravies and thicken them up. It's gluten-free. It doesn't lump or give you any lumps or anything. I use this at home a lot. It's very hard to find, so I bring a little bit of my own. And popcorn. I know. I love popcorn. I'm a Midwest girl, but this is non-GMO organic heirloom popcorn. Hard to find, and I always bring a little of my own because it's my favorite snack. Okay, you're gonna see a few things in this video that I'm not showing you right now, like the spice kit. I covered that in last week's video. I'll link it up here. Might be best for you to watch that because that's my minimalist must-haves and then everything else you see in this video is if I'm cooking on the road. So watch that video and you'll see how I make the spice kit and see the other items. These little plastic food bags, they're actually made to carry like children's food, like smoothies so they can sip them out of here, but I'm using them for some spices. And one of them is everything but the bagel seasoning because I use this a lot and I like how it keeps it nice and you know dry in here. I love that. And I make my own homemade ranch seasoning. Um, that way I know everything that's in there. I make it myself and I bring it along. It's great for putting on popcorn, vegetables, anything. It's just a great thing to have. Um, these little things are wonderful. Now, I showed you once that I put oil in these to take. I did, but honestly, they didn't leak all out, but they got a little oily and, and yucky. I wouldn't put oil in these. You might be able to put pureed baby, few, baby foods, things that are a little thicker, or anything dry like this, it works great. But I love how, love how flat they are. So these take up very little room. And if I wanted to sprinkle, I just take off the cap. But if I want to like scoop, I can open up the bottom here. It's just like a little like a little Ziploc bag here, and you can just open this up and then scoop a larger amount if you like, but these seal up great for these like dried um, 
spices and things like that when I need a larger amount. These are a great must have for some of my travel adventures. This little thing of Tabasco sauce because sometimes you just need a little hot and spicy. Now this Airbnb provides everything, like utensils and all that, but I have been at Airbnbs or even like efficiencies or you know, extended stays where things are missing, like can openers. For those of you who follow me, you know the whole can opener issue where I got in late and I bought a can of soup and it wasn't one of those pop top ones and I didn't have a can opener. So I went hungry and it was just really miserable. So I always carry the little P51 or P38 can opener with me all the time. I at least know that I have that, but I have a few other things that I take along with me in case the Airbnb doesn't have anything. And I don't wanna go out and buy something that is gonna get left here and waste my money on it. So I'd rather pack some of my own so that I can do my own cooking at the place that I'm staying. This is my little um, kitchen utensil bag. And I bring this whenever I'm gonna be doing any major cooking, like through the pot that I'm gonna show you. All right, this is my little bag that I take with me when I'm bringing a cook pot, especially. Um, and some of these things I bring with me anyway, but let's just go through it. Um, I do bring a knife like this. It's a folding knife uh, because it cuts whatever I needed to cut. It's long enough in the blade, but it's also something if I go hiking, um, I can take this out with me. If I'm packing carry-on only, obviously I cannot take this. I also bring my own soap just in case because in most places, if, if it's not a full kitchen, they're not gonna have that. Some places don't supply it any longer. This is three ounces, so I can bring this in part of my with my carry-on luggage. These are my folding utensils that I use when I bring that pot with me. I like this because they do fold and they come out into full size um, utensils, which is nice. And they work well in the pan. I could even hang them if I wanted to. This would be great for like an RV or camp set. Um, and because the bottom of that pan is something like some sort of nonstick, I wanted something that wouldn't cut up the bottom of the pan. I also have a, a spatula like this. If I'm mixing in that bowl or I wanna scrape something out, or turn over eggs easy, These, this works great. I also have a couple of cleaning things. So I have, this is cut up. This is, comes in a very large piece, like an eight by 10. I cut up to small pieces. I just need a small piece of a little thin sponge. And then I always bring some sort of cut up piece of uh, scrubber to scrub something out in case something gets a little stuck. And then my sink stopper, so I can plug up a sink or a bathtub, that comes with me. And the last thing is this, it's a piece of a larger dollar store cutting board that I cut to fit into here. And um, it's just so that if I wanna cut something, like for example, in a hotel room, they don't have a cutting board. So I'm gonna wanna do this and protect whatever surface I'm cutting on. So just a little cutting board comes with me. And all of that goes into this clear bag so that I can see everything and uh, access everything quickly. If you're someone who wants to make like a little smoothie or some sort of a protein shake when you're traveling to have a drink on the plane, these stackable little food safe jars are perfect. They lock together so you can have a couple of different protein powders so that you can mix them into, you know, your drink on the plane. And they also come apart so you can use like one at a time and go ahead and put it into your drink and then save some for the rest of your trip but these are great things. I like these little ones too. So when I'm going on my travel adventure, I put things like powdered peanut butter in here. So all I have to do is add a little water to this and then I can just mix it up and have some peanut butter for crackers or vegetables or for with my grandkids. These are great things to have for them too. But another great travel item to have to take some protein powders or any sort of powdered or even liquid things with you. These will also hold liquids and are TSA approved. These are skinny little bags right here. And as you can see right now, there's some powdered peanut butter in here. You can put anything in them. They're great for storing foods at your Airbnb or something like that. But what I like is that they are nice and skinny. So they're great to put in your personal carry-on and slide in there if you have something that you want. It'll hold liquids or powders. It will be completely leak-proof. And when you're done with it, it folds completely flat so I can take that home and save some space for some souvenirs I wanna bring for my travel adventures. 
Good morning. I'm gonna cook breakfast in here, but I'm gonna rearrange her kitchen. I hate to say it, but there is not an outlet on this wall anywhere. And there's two outlets on this wall. But as you can see, there's no counter space. So I'm gonna do a little rearranging so I can get some workspace and cook some breakfast. I spread these two things apart so I could just have a little bit of workspace here. You can see I've got my coffee heating up right here and then oops, my pan <laughs> over here that I'm gonna to try to cook bacon in today. That's gonna to be my test to see if this thing will cook some bacon and then cook some eggs and cook myself a good breakfast. But first, coffee. All right, I literally just turned this on and it's already cooking with bacon. I hope it doesn't get too hot. We'll see how it goes. It's doing pretty good. Now, I will tell you it was a quirk. It seemed to like shut, it didn't shut down, but it lowered the temperature and I cycled back through to fry and it brought it back up. So it's probably some protection for it but so far it's cooking the bacon. Well, if I'm gonna cook bacon, I'm gonna cook it all at once because it's just a mess, right? So I figured it out. You just have to leave it on. And I think what it does is it hits a certain heat temperature, then it cools down and then it kicks back on again. Um, I think it's a protection so that it doesn't end up causing a fire, but it's what it's doing now. I'm not having to touch it. And it's frying the bacon pretty nicely now. All right, it's ready, yay. Okay, it's the crunchy bacon test, let's see. If you like crunchy bacon, this will get it there for you. Kinda hard to do this filming in one hand and cooking eggs in another. But we got some nice over easy eggs going on here. All right, a little spice pack and salt. Like the bacon isn't salty enough, but my eggs need salt. Some pepper. Okie dokie, breakfast is served. That little pot did pretty good. I'm pretty excited about that. I, I cooked in like scrambled eggs, which is a little different, but. Sometimes I love a nice over easy egg. Mm. I love these little plastic bags because they fold flat, but they're perfect for putting in leftover pieces of bacon and storing them. I cool my bacon grease and save it because it makes great oil for frying and these little plastic containers make a great little storage for that. It's been raining all weekend, so I finally got a break and decided to take a walk around the lake. It's just beautiful here, so lush and green, a nice lake take a walk. Oh, feels so good to be outside. Oh, the tree fell down. <sighs> Got past it. <laughs> walk but now I'm gonna get my favorite snack which is popcorn <laughs> I got this pan specifically because of this thing it's going to allow me to make my favorite favorite thing popcorn I bought this because it had this special lid that was specifically for popcorn All right, you just gotta see this. We have popcorn. <laughs> Yay. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy right now. All right, 
I make my homemade ranch seasoning and I bring it with me and I put it on my popcorn. It's so delicious. This is one of the specific reasons why I bring it, just to have on my popcorn. I am one happy girl now. <laughs> it is another really rainy day. It's been raining every day except for the day I got here and I'm tired of it. <laughs> okay, so I have this pot right here, as you can see, with some water and some eggs in it. And I have this mug with water and my immersion heater and one egg in it. Just wanna see, I, I, I can pretty much guarantee this will give me a hard boiled egg. This I'm not sure, because the way this element heats, it heats up and then it cools for a minute and then it heats back up slowly. I'm not sure if this will do it. it. Has several settings on here and I have it on hot pot. We'll see. This may take forever. I, I know this will give me a hard boiled egg. This just takes a little more longer to get the water hot, but uh, we'll see if this works at all. <laughs> all right, things are starting to boil in the hot pot and I don't know if you can really tell here, it, it's starting to boil too, just slightly. Okay, this is boiling pretty good now. This is still doing its little simmer thing. It's getting a little bit better, but yeah, I think we're gonna have some hard boiled eggs maybe. I've heard this thing shut off a couple times. However, it's come back on quickly, maybe because there's water in the pot, but it seems to be doing pretty good. All right, so I did just burn myself. I wanna show you something. There's a hole right here where the popcorn stirrer goes in. You'll see steam coming out here maybe. See the hole? and that burnt my hand when I put my hand right over top of it to grab the lid. But everything's boiling now, so we'll start the countdown to get hard-boiled eggs. It's time unplugging. I already unplugged the other one. Let's get these into some cold water. I don't have ice water, so we're just going to have to do this with uh, some tap water, cold tap water. Here we go. All right, let's check this egg out and see if it's hard boiled. I might have overcooked it. I saw a little bit of dark green like there. I might have overcooked it. Let's take a look. Mmm. It worked. Mmm. So um, it took probably 20 minutes for this to kind of all get done. 10 minutes to kind of get it to that boiling point and then another 10 minutes to hard boil the eggs. But um, yeah, it's I'm, I'm really kind of surprised that pot did it. I didn't think it would, but I think because there was liquid in the pot, it stayed kind of in that boiling mode. So that's, that's a good thing. Hard boiled eggs, one of my favorite things. There you go. A beautiful hard boiled egg with my immersion heater. A little balsamic, a little avocado oil. So now look at this beautiful salad. I made these with the hard boiled eggs I made yesterday. It's turning out to be a wonderful salad for my lunch today. Isn't it beautiful? I love all the colors. Good morning. Well, yesterday I got to watch my daughter-in-law make homemade sourdough bread from scratch. And she made me this beautiful loaf. And I'm so excited to get into this this morning and have some of this with my homemade marmalade, and yes, I did bring some with me to bring to them, but I have a little bit with me in the Airbnb, and I'm gonna have some of that for breakfast today. This is just, look at that, perfect. Just, oh my goodness. I'm so excited for this. Listen to the crust on this bread. And it's nice and spongy. Perfect. Well, they don't have a toaster here. At least I can't find one. So I'm going to toast it 
in a pan. It's actually my favorite way to make toast because it's really buttery and good. It's just delicious. <laughs> All right, I just put a little butter in the pan. I have it set on fry. You can hear it sizzling already. Piece in here. <laughs> Toast in a pan. All right, let's flip these again. Ooh, it's getting so nice and getting a little crispy. Yummy. All right, it's looking awesome. Look at that. This was made in a pan and the other piece too. Now the other piece got a little dark on one side, but I'll eat it. It's wonderful. But a little bit of this homemade Meyer lemon marmalade is going to make this the perfect breakfast this morning. So worth it. Thank you, Massima. Mm. I'm happy. Good morning. Guess what the weather's like today? It's raining. <laughs> it has been raining every day, but one day. Um, all the clothes that I brought, when I checked the weather, literally the day before I left, and you can only check like 10 days out, but it said it was gonna be sunny and warm, and it wasn't, it just all changed. It's been raining every single day but one. But anyway, today, cooking a steak in a pan. Let's get going. All right, it's a ribeye. Yum. I put just a little oil in. Um, just to keep it from sticking right away. All right, while that's cooking, I wanna show you something. This is something I brought on the trip. I don't normally bring this, especially when I'm flying because it takes cartridges like this and I cannot fly with them. You can't put them in your carry-on and you cannot put them in your checked luggage. You can bring this, but I can't bring this. So if I bring this, I have to order these. So if I'm gonna be somewhere um, a longer period of time and I know Amazon's available for me, I will get these and have them delivered. Or if I'm going on a car trip, I'm gonna be in my car, I will bring these along with me. But this is my bubbly water maker. I love having a little bit of bubbly water when I'm having a meal um, or after a meal or something and it's just very refreshing. So this is my thing that I've been taking now for a while and you'll see it has this little thing in here, but let's get this filled up and show you how it works. All right, I've got my water. You only fill it up so much because you've got to put this in, and then I have to put a cartridge in, which is basically, it's a um, CO2 cartridge is exactly what it is, and that fits into this cup like this. You see right here, and it fits into here. Here we go, ready? And now I have some bubbly water. One time use on the cartridge. Just uh, recycle it, it's a recyclable thing, so make sure you fill it in the recycle bin. Then I'm going to just take up this. It's gonna gas off a little bit, yeah. And now I have nice bubbly water for my meal. All right, let's give this a look. Looking pretty nice right there. All right. All right, because these CO2 canisters only come in a pack of 20, I only buy these if I'm gonna be somewhere a longer period of time or 
uh, somewhere where, like at my son's house, where I can leave these there and if I need them, I can go to his house and get them. Otherwise, I have to throw all these away because you can't fly with them. So traveling by air, a little tricky, only if I'm staying somewhere a long time or if I'm traveling by car. Also, if you leave this lid on, it'll help keep the bubbles in it. So if you don't drink at all, it'll help uh, preserve the bubbles for later. But if you like drinking bubbly water, you don't wanna buy cans all the time and things like that, this is a great way to go. All right. Cheers. So nice. All right, the steak's about ready. I'm gonna start getting ready to plate. Steak salad is one of my favorite things to eat, so that's what I'm making for my breakfast today. Breakfast for me meaning first meal of the day. Um, you know, if I'm up a little bit early, I'll have something light, like maybe just some tea or coffee, but today I'm gonna have a full breakfast, I have a long day, and then I don't have anything to eat until dinner tonight, so I will have a sushi dinner tonight, so I'm having my steak as my main meal today. Give us a check. This needs to be good. Cherry tomatoes. I'm going to use some of the oil from these olives as part of my oil for the dressing on my salad here. I'm going to let this steam a little bit just to get it really cooked. All right, I let this rest for about five minutes. I just want to see what this is going to look like. I'm only going to eat half of this because it's a big steak. And Perfect. Perfect. Take a look at this again. All right, let's dig in. I'm going to cut slices and put this on my salad. I think these are going to be perfect for my steak salad. Yum. Little salt. Little pepper. A drizzle of balsamic. And this, my friends, is how you have a steak salad on the road. I'm really happy with how this turned out. All I've added is some nice sourdough bread here that my daughter-in-law made for me so I could have some bread in my room. And yes, I brought some lemons from my home so I could have some homemade lemons, but I'm ready to dig into this beautiful steak salad. Mm. It's almost like being at home. A beautiful medium rare steak. It's one of my favorite things. Mm. I'll save the rest of this for another meal. And that's another reason why I bring this little collapsible bowl because it's a great way to store food. Well, I hope you got some great ideas for some gadgets that help you cook some great homemade healthy meals on the road. I will leave links to everything in the video description so you can pick up a few things for yourself. And remember to juice life, drink the joy, keep life simple. 
Remember to get yourself a few cooking gadgets to eat healthy on the road. I'll see you in the next video. Bye and cheers. I forgot a fork. <laughs> to be able to, ooh, almost dropped that.